How many remember Huff? Huff is a streetwear brand created by Keith Huffenangle, which focuses on products with resistant construction, fresh style, and casual graphics. Huff was one of the first brands to mix the worlds of skateboarding and hip-hop, and in doing so, helped create the genre that we now call streetwear. This video is a bit of a change of pace from the norm, as we usually cover the rise and fall of brands, but this will be more of a remembrance and a celebration of Huff the Brand and Keith Huff and Angle himself. I'm Nate the Great from TakeFlight214.com and this is the rise and fall of Huff. But before we get started, don't forget to smash that like button. Liking the video helps us out in the search rankings so that we can continue to spread our reach as a channel and grow. But with that being said, now let's jump right in. The story of Huff starts with Keith and his love of skateboarding. Although Huff, the brand, was born in California, Keith was born on the other side of the country in New York. He came up in the 80s and 90s New York skate scene, and he and his friends would skate around the city tagging as most rambunctious New York teens sometimes do. Keith began using the tag Huff One as sort of a calling card. The name sort of stuck as Keith would go on to skate professionally. He would eventually move to San Francisco where new contacts, collaborators, and sponsors led him to set up his own skateboarding shop in 2002. Inspired by his old nickname, Keith would christen the store Huff. The original store offered pieces from internationally renowned cult brands, early streetwear, and special sneaker models from all other brands. But once the store caught on, they started to produce products here and there with the shop name on it. It started out with just tees and hats, but before they knew it, the stuff caught on and they turned out to be a full-blown clothing line. Huff started producing their own premium clothing, which included branded shoes, socks, and general skateboarding goods and accessories. Keith saw skateboarding as an extension of a lifestyle rather than just a hobby or a sport. He believed that skating brings together all sorts of like-minded people from photographers to musicians, artists, and other creative types. But speaking of artists, if you're looking to spice up your living space, then I got an ad for you. <laughs> Another creative ad drop. But check it out. Are you tired of the bland ambiance at home and want to add more personality? Well, at TakeFlight214.com, we offer custom canvas prints, aluminum artwork, posters, and much more. We've been in business for over 15 years offering high-quality wall art, apparel, and promotional materials. Any size, any design, we got you covered. Thousands of designs in stock, and we also offer printable files that you can download directly after ordering. So stop by today and check out our aluminum artwork. It's high gloss, high quality, and extremely durable. So if you want to add more life to your living space and have been looking for the perfect artwork to do so, then stop by TakeFlight214.com today because blank walls are boring. But anyway, let's get back to the story. As creative director of Huff, Keith mostly looked to his travels, American design, and practicality for inspiration. Before anything, comfort and functionality were always top focus when creating skate gear. When the fundamentals were up to standard, it was time to get creative with the prints, colors, and fabrics. And though things did change over the course of the brand, Huff and Angle always held strong to the same core beliefs that drove him since day one. He saw skateboarding as something far from simply a sport. He saw it as a way of life, a skateboarding lifestyle. Skateboarding, and by extension streetwear, transcends race and social structure and exposes the individual to a world free from prejudice or restriction. When you think about it, culture was probably in its coolest spot yet around the early to mid-2000s, and in my opinion, skate culture and the spawn of streetwear played a role in bringing everyone together, as previously culture had been cordoned off into their own respective corners. Huff looked to classic American craftsmanship, timeless vintage design, and an appreciation for fine and functional modern detail to produce quality goods that incorporated past and the present while crafting what would be later known as the future. Part of the identity translated into Huff's dirtbag crew, a phrase that appeared across his collection celebrating cheap beer, psychedelics, 80s BMX culture, and a f**k it attitude. 
Unlike many brands that experience success, Huff never strayed away from its core fan base. They sponsored a skate team geared around their branded shoes, and in 2014, Huff announced the release of Dylan Reader's debut signature model, the Dylan. Developed under Dylan's close direction, the Dylan adapted a distinct design-oriented aesthetic to produce a superior quality ready-to-skate shoe. Sadly, Dylan would pass away two years after the release after a battle with cancer. Also in 2016, Huff finally opened the store in Keats' home state of New York, followed by Huff Osaka, which would further expand the brand's reach in Japan. Huff was at the top of their game. They had gone from one store in LA to now seven, with one each in Los Angeles and New York, plus five in Japan, and things couldn't have been going better. Well, at least it seemed that way on the surface. That year also saw them bring on Eddie Miyoshi, a 20-year veteran of Costa Mesa-based Volcom as CEO. Huff would see a 90% stake of the business trade hands from Altamont Capital to TSI Holdings Company Limited for a reported $63 million. The aim was to transition the brand from just a skate and streetwear brand and more into a premium legacy brand, which also meant higher prices. However, by 2018, rumors started to circulate that Huff was done. Some of the brand's core fan base didn't really take too well to the corporate move and some of the decisions that had been made lately. And one of those decisions was to get out of the shoe business. The fact that a skate shoe brand as seemingly successful as Huff might be reconsidering making shoes just shows how difficult the footwear business really was. This would also affect their skate team. Keith informed the guys a year in advance that this was happening and supported them all the way throughout 2019. Keith was so cool about it that he even offered to rip up the contracts of anyone who wanted to sign with another brand. The goal was to take a step back from the shoes to place more attention into the clothing side, with the potential to possibly come back to them later on in the future. But sadly, in September of 2020, a post on Huff Worldwide Instagram account marked a black day for the skate community. Keith Huff and Angle had died two and a half years after fighting brain tumors at the age of 46. When we think about Keith Huffenangle the person, we have to think about endless possibilities. His contribution to the skateboarding and streetwear culture changed the entire landscape. From the days of rocking the golden bowl haircut that he always had, to his tenure at Huff, the brand that carried his name in the fashion, Keith Huffenangle remained the same person. As for Huff the brand, it's still around today. The core feel of the brand is still basically the same, proving that over all these years, Huff, much like its namesake, never strayed too far from their roots. It's for this reason that you can't really say Huff fell off. It's still respected for its quality and visual aesthetic, not to mention the grandfather aspect of being one of the first brands in the genre called streetwear. And much like skateboarding, Huff would bring everyone together under one big flag as one culture, and as one people. But what do you think? Were you a fan of Huff? Do you remember the brand and would you still wear it today? Hit us in the comment section and let us know. And if you made it this far in, then obviously you liked the video. So if so, smash that like button. As we always say, hitting the like button helps us out in the YouTube search rankings so that we can continue to grow and spread our reach as a channel. We really want to get beyond a thousand views and to get our stuff out to as many people as possible and we can't do it without you guys help. So hit that like button and also if you want to be updated whenever we drop a new video, hit the red subscription button and the notification bell to be dinged whenever we drop a new episode which comes out every Sunday. But with that being said, I'm Nate the Great from TakeFlight214.com signing out until next time. Peace people.